Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, that's better. That's better. Let's stand and sing one of my favorite songs. Oh, how I love Jesus. It's number 217. If you want to see it in the hymnal. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, a sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, it tells me what my father has in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, he'll sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love. Because he first loved me, it tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus! Now, Mike got you warmed up. Good morning. You did good. We might, we might keep you around a little bit. I'd uh, like to welcome you all this morning. Looking around, I think it's pretty much all home folks this morning. Uh, did y'all all get your bellies full of black-eyed peas and collards yesterday? Boy, that didn't sound too good. Fritos and buttermilk. Everybody said, oh, they didn't like that. Uh, some shook their head, yeah. Okay. Uh, like to welcome you again this morning. Uh, Patty, thank you. Uh, Y'all be praying for Patty. I asked her how she was doing. She said, I was doing good till I walked in. Uh, Ann's out, so she's filling in for us. Thank you for doing that. Uh, and it'll be over quickly, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, just share a few announcements with you. Uh, Wednesday, church council meeting at uh, 11 o'clock. Please be there if you're on church council as we're going to uh, start planning out our calendar for 2022 so we can let everybody know so they can make plans. Uh, then join us Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Uh, we have a good time with our Bible studies. We have a good time. Uh, we've been going and visiting our shut-ins. Uh, every month, in the month of December, we've spent the whole month with our shut-ins on Wednesday nights. And I've got a good opportunity for uh, a new little ministry that we're going to talk about on Wednesday night. So please be there to be a part of that. Uh, find out what we're going to do. Uh, the Joymakers on Thursday will be going to Silver Bay and Easley at 11.45 a.m. If you plan to go... Uh, to Silver Bay with the Joymakers on Thursday. Please sign up in the vestibule. 
uh, so we can make sure that we have a table large enough to accommodate all of us. And then uh, looking out just a little bit, next Sunday uh, we're going to have some exciting news of some stuff that's going to take place in the life of our church here at Tabernacle. Um, in 2022, we're going to announce that uh, next week. So be here, uh, of course, next Sunday so you can find out what's going on and be praying uh, for that announcement and pray that God gets you ready for that announcement so that you'll be ready to respond. Uh, then looking out a little further in, in February, the end of February, February 26th, I believe, is Darlene, isn't that right? February the 26th. Um, our lifestylers are going to host their women's conference again. Women, if you have not been a part of that conference, you need to be a part of that conference. They do a very good job of putting that together, having some fun, uh, little breakout sessions and stuff. Uh, but they do a wonderful, wonderful job with the music and the speakers. And I promise you, if you'll just take your son, uh, Saturday afternoon or Saturday and come and be a part of that, you will be blessed. There's no doubt about that. Um, if you look on the back of your bulletin, uh, you can see we've got a bunch sick in our church and in, uh, our extended church family. Um, I talked with Murtis Wilson yesterday, and um, she had a fall, and she is in the hospital right now. And in talking with her you, on the phone, you wouldn't know she was in the hospital. Uh, her spirits are very great, but she laid on the floor for over eight hours. Um, but So she's real sore. She's got kidney infections and some other stuff going on. So please be in prayer for her. But she, she wanted me to assure you all that she was praying for y'all, that she loves y'all, that she enjoyed all the visits uh, through December. Uh, and Mr. Jim Babb was carried to the hospital this morning uh, about 4 a.m. with breathing issues, so please pray for him. And you look around, we've got uh, the numbers are low this morning, and that could be sickness, that could just be precaution. Uh, Ann's going to get tested, Jenny uh, Seegers and Everett. Um, Jenny has COVID, Everett's being tested today. So uh, just pray for each other during this time. Pray for each other. Take the precautions that you need to take. If you're sick, don't come to church. We will, we will get, uh, we've got our YouTube channel. You can watch it on. If you want a DVD, you make it known, and we'll make a DVD and get it to you. Uh, but if you're sick, just stay at home and get well before you come back to church. And I think that that's one of the things that we can say as a church, that we haven't had a spread of COVID throughout this church like other churches because we have been, we've taken the right precautions and done the right things. Okay, so let's pray and we'll continue our worship service this morning. Father God, we just come to you today thankful for who you are, for how much you love us. Father, we're thankful that we have another year uh, that we can start off by being in your house Start off in a wonderful way by celebrating uh, the birth of our Savior. Father, let us never forget the love that you have for us. Father, as we're excited for this new year, Father, I just pray that you will work in the life of each and every one of our church members. Father, to, to strengthen them spiritually. Father, that they will just be in a place that they've never been spiritually before. That they can show your love, your grace, and your mercy through their lives. Father, we know that, that each member is the church. And Father, if, if we all grow spiritually, individually, the, the spiritual growth of this church will just explode. And Father, I know that you have great plans for this church, and Father, I just pray that we will all be obedient to what you would have us to do to be a part of that growth. 
Father, we have so many sick on our, on our prayer list. And Father, we, we know that you know everything that's going on with them. Father, we just pray that your will will be done. Father, that you'll use doctors and nurses and, and medications to, to restore their health. But Father, while they're there going through these difficult times, Father, we just pray that they feel your peace and they feel your love. Father, use us as your saints to reach out to them, to love on them, so that they will never forget that you love them. Father, as we continue with this worship service this morning, Father, I just pray that you'll remove all the distractions from this place. Father, that the Holy Spirit will just be in an overwhelming abundance that we can all feel this morning. Father, may everything that's said, everything that's sung, everything that's done, Father, may it bring honor and may it bring glory to you and to your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I guess y'all all heard that. We have reached our Lottie, go Lottie Moon goal this morning. And Jamie favored me with two, two of my favorite hymns. He probably didn't even know that. But uh, Love Lifted Me is another one of mine. And Jamie, you may help me with uh, the scripture, but <clears throat> I know there's a scripture verse that say, we love him because he first loved us. I want to say that came from John, but I'm not positive. Uh, but think about it. We just sang, oh, how I love Jesus. Now we're going to sing, love lifted me. That's his love for us. Stand with me and let's sing together. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. despairing cry from the waters lifted me now safe am I love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me
I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. I'm more than just the sum of every high and every low. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. you believe this morning? How do people know that you believe? Can they see it in your life? I hope they can because as Christians that's where we need to be. If you have your Bibles, turn in your Bibles to Ephesians uh, chapter 3.
Cassidy, thank you for running in. She was called in traffic. She sent me a message a while ago. And uh, I don't know that I can or could have run in at the last minute and come up here and sing and done just as good a job. Thank you for that. As we begin a new year, I think it's important for us to, to look at the health of our church. Over the last six months since I became your pastor, um, just give you some, some numbers. Our average Sunday school attendance was 27. Our average Sunday worship was 65. Our average weekly budget giving was $3,221.36, which is actually $10,000 shorter than the budget that we as a church approved for 2022. Over those six months, we've had seven people join the church, one through salvation and baptism. We have several people who are volunteering once again that hadn't been active in the church, and that's encouraging for me as a pastor, and, and we've had several first-time volunteers to do things in the church, and that is, that's a wonderful feeling as well. On average, per week for the last quarter, you know, I, I held those cards up, and you should still be getting those cards and filling those out. Um, we started that in the last quarter. The invitations to non-members, and this is a weekly average over the last quarter, has been 12. Invitations to MIAs, and those are our members who haven't been attending for whatever reason, is seven. Shut-ins visits per week is four. Member visits per week is one. Calls to shut-ins is six, and calls to our members is nine per week on average. We've averaged 26 times participating in missions. We've prayed on average for 21 lost people by name uh, over the past year, or the past quarter, I'm sorry. Seven times we've shared the gospel message per week. And 34 random, random acts of kindness. Now, you know, those numbers sound bad, but these are from an average of 10 people per week. And we average 67, so where would we be if all of us was doing these numbers? Now, you might be sitting there saying, why are these numbers important? Why are you sharing them? Number one, I'm not that big a numbers person, but these numbers, these statistics mean a lot. First off, we can learn a lot from these statistics, can't we? First, we can tell if we're on track doing what we need to be doing as a church, as, as individuals, right? Um, we can learn that. They can let us know if our outreach events are doing any good? Or are we seeing an influx of people after we do uh, a trunk or treat or what other, other outreach that we're doing? And if we're spending time and money and doing outreach projects that's not bringing people into the church, then what should we do? We should rethink that, right? And, and do something else and do something different to try to get people into the church and, and share the gospel message. And most importantly, no matter how good the numbers are, you know what these numbers can tell us? That we still got a lot of work to do. And when does that work stop, church? When we take our last breath. In visiting our shut-ins, I've, I've had shut-ins just sit and cry and say, I wish God would just take me home. I'm ready to go. Why, why am I still here? Because God's not through with you yet. That's what I tell him. And, and the question then becomes what? Well, what does he want me to do? Because he's got something for us to do until we draw our last breath. 
We can look at these numbers and, and help guide each of us and us as a church in the direction that God wants us to move. Okay? Additionally, we can also realize that God has a specific purpose for each one of you in the ministry of Tabernacle Baptist Church. Everybody that's sitting here today, everybody that's watching online, has a specific purpose in the ministry of Tabernacle Baptist Church. If you don't know what that is, come see me. We'll talk about it. We'll find out the gifts that God has given you, and we will put you to work using those gifts, using those things you like to do, in the ministry of Tabernacle Baptist Church. One of the things, and, and I see Miss Bobby's here this morning. Scott, thank you for bringing, going and getting her and bringing her. I told her the other day when I was visiting her, I wish that as a pastor that was my only thing I had to do was go and visit shut-ins because I enjoy that so much, just sitting down and being able to talk and to listen and learn. I wish that was it. Because that would be an easy job. It really would. So this morning, uh, I show, shared those numbers with you to show what we've done. And the church is in a pretty good situation right now. But we've got a lot of work to do and we've got a lot of growth as I prayed this morning that I believe God is going to do, but it's going to take all of us, okay? And I want to share with you this morning a prayer for the church and how we can use this prayer to, in our own lives to grow closer to God, okay? And if we do that and we grow closer to God, you know what that's going to do? That's going to strengthen the church because you and I are the church. It's not this building. It's not the facilities here. It's me and it's you. And if I'm doing what God wants me to do and each one of you are doing what God wants you to do, guess what's going to happen? This church is going to flourish. God's going to do great things through us as a church. So let's look at Ephesians and let's look at this prayer. Ephesians 3 verses 14 through 21, and, and this is Paul writing to the Ephesian church. And this is what Paul says, starting in verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. So the very first thing that I noticed in Ephesians here in this, in this verse is, is that Paul, the manner that Paul placed himself when he prayed this prayer, okay? And he said, I bow my knees. Now I want you to think, of, think back and you've seen it in movies and you've read it in the scripture. How did the Jews pray during this time? They stood with their hands like this, right? Now, there's nothing wrong with praying like this. But what does Paul do? Paul gets down on his knees. Paul gets in, in a position and an attitude that shows submission to God. 
We can be submitted to God like this, right? But what shows submission is when you get down on your knees and pray. This also shows even more reverence to God than to pray in like this, like the Jews did, right? If you're down on your knees, you're showing submission and you're showing reverence to God. And you know what also he showed? His intense passion in his prayer. Now you might be sitting here saying, Jamie, I can't get down on my knees and pray for whatever reason. I'll tell you, we were at a, we was doing a revival service at Rehoboth several years ago. And I think it was the night that I preached and I was standing there and I saw this elderly woman and she had a neck brace on and the neck brace came down to here on both sides and she walks down the aisle and comes and gets down on the altar and gets down on her knees to pray. Little did I know that the doctors told her absolutely, number one, not to be going out. So, you know, she had already disobeyed the doctors and she was at church and not to get, not to bend over or anything like that because, and I can't remember if she had neck surgery or if she had broke her neck or what it was, but what did she do? She walked down and she got down on her knees not knowing if she would be able to get back up again to pray, to show submission to God. And when she went to get up, she wasn't able to get up. So we had to help her up. But what did she do? She showed that submission. She showed the passion that she had and the love that she had for Christ to come and get down on an altar not knowing if she would be able to get up, not knowing if she would mess her neck up even more than it was. Church, we've got to have the same attitude when we pray. We've got to have that passion. You know, so many of us pray, Dear Lord, thank you for today, blah, blah, blah. That's not passion, is it? We've got to have passion in our prayer. We've got to have a burning desire to talk with God. There are four things in this verse, in these verses, that I saw, and, and I think that um, it's worth noting and it's worth taking notes so we can look at this and live our lives as brothers and sisters in Christ, and we can pray this prayer for our brothers and sisters in Christ. The first is an inward power. We need to pray for an inward power, and that's found in verse 16. When Paul said, be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Church, you know what one of the birthmarks of a Christian is? It's the power that we receive, the power that we possess that moment when we make Jesus the Lord of our lives. Where does this power come from? In Acts 1.8, we're told, he says, But you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Once we turn our lives over and make Jesus the Lord of our lives, the Holy Spirit indwells within us and it gives us a power, church. It gives us a power. And you know what that power is? That, that power is the same power that rose Jesus from the grave. And as a Christian, you know what, church? That's the same power that lives in you. So when God tells you to do something, don't argue with Him and say, Lord, I can't do that. Because you have the power that God gave you to accomplish what He's called you to do. Did you get that? If God calls you to do something, He's already given you the power to do it. All we've got to do is be obedient to do what He has called us to do. Now we're talking about strength. We're talking about power here, church. Now, there's two types of 
strength here we're talking about. We're talking about physical strength and we're talking about spiritual strength. Now we know as we age, our physical strength what? It decreases, don't it? It decreases. I've seen several people shaking their head and going, you know, it falls off the cliff. Uh, but you know what? In the life of a Christian, it don't matter how old you are, your spiritual strength, your spiritual power should increase each and every day. Our spiritual strength is like our spiritual, our physical strength in that in order to increase our physical strength, what do we have to do? Gina, what do we have to do? Go to the gym three and four days a week, exercise, lift weights, right? If we want to be physically strong, that's what we've got to do, right? So if we want to be spiritually strong, Strong, what do we have to do? We've got to get in the spiritual gym, don't we? And you might be looking at me like I'm crazy. There's a spiritual gym, church. It's to be in the Bible. It's to read your Bible every day. It's to be in prayer constantly. Now, I see some sort of crazy eyes looking at me. Jamie just said, to pray, we need to be down on our knees praying, right? To show submission, how can I pray constantly? I've got to work. We can pray constantly, but there's times that we need to get down on our knees and pray with that passion, right? We need to be about sharing the gospel message, church. How many of you, and I want you to raise your hand, and I'll be the first to raise your hand. How many of you think sharing the gospel message is a scary thing? It is, isn't it? Why? Because we're worried about what people think about us. But you know what? What did I just tell you? If God calls you to share the gospel message and you're scared, he's already given you the power to overcome that fear, that scaredness, and share the gospel message. Because that person that he's called you to share the gospel message with, you might be the only person that he's called to share the gospel message with that person. We've got to be faithful in our giving, church. That's of our time. Right? Of our talent and of our treasure. We got to be faithful in that. When somebody comes to you and says, Hey, I want you to do this in the church, you've got a talent for it. You need to share your talent, you need to share your time, and you definitely need to share your treasure. And by doing this, you know what you're going to do? You do all of this, what's going to happen? Spiritually, you're going to get stronger. That power is going to increase and God will do great things through you. Each one of us must have this spiritual strength that Paul's talking about here so that we can emulate who? Christ. So that we can emulate Christ. Because I can't do it in my own strength, can I? I can't live the life that Jesus lived. I can't even come close without having that spiritual strength, that spiritual power that is given to us by the Holy Spirit. When we do that, when we emulate Christ with our lives as closely as we can, because that's what we're supposed to do as Christians, right? We're supposed to live a life that, that resembles Christ's life as closely as we can. Each one of us here will increase our spiritual strength. And guess what? If everybody in here increases their spiritual strength, how does that affect Tabernacle Baptist Church? Huh? It increases, right? Big time. So we've got the inward power. The next thing that Paul prays for is an inward power. 
presence. And that's found in verse 17. And he says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in what? Love. We've talked about love over and over again, haven't we? You know, as Christians, we must absolutely, positively have the presence of Christ within us. If you don't have the presence of Christ within you, then you need to check and make sure that you're a Christian. We should not only have it within us, but you know what? Where else should it be? Shining round about us, right? It should be very visible to each and every person that we come in contact with day in and day out. Where do our actions originate, church? Our mind within, right? Our inward self is where our actions originate. Now here's the question, or here's something to think about. If Christ dwells within us, our actions will be like that of Christ. Okay? And if our actions are somewhere else, where where are they coming from? That inward sinful nature, right? Now I said if Christ dwells within us, okay? our actions will be like that of Christ. If you look at that word dwell, that means to be at home, to find comfort, to be at peace. Okay? Now think about your home for a minute. If your home is a battlefield, a place of constant stress and constant turmoil, are you going to dwell there? You're going to be at peace there? You're not, are you? You're probably not going to stay there very long, are you? You're going to be looking for other places to go. You know, it's the same way with the Holy Spirit. It can only dwell or be at home is in the life of a Christian that is constantly cleaning out their heart and out of their lives the sin that brings division between us and the Holy Spirit. If we allow sin to take take place, the Holy Spirit's still here, but He's not dwelling. He hadn't found a home. So what do we got to do for him, for him to find a home? That sin, we've got to be constantly, what? Repenting, confessing, and asking for forgiveness for those sins, Right? Now, is there a day or a time in this life when we shouldn't be repenting, confessing, or asking for forgiveness? Absolutely not. Because guess what? You're going to see it each and every day of your life. There's no doubt about it. We, we all miss opportunities to share the gospel. We all miss opportunities to share the love of Christ. But we've got to constantly be clean in our hearts of that. Think about if all of our lives were characterized by that type of inward presence, where would this church be? Where would it be? What would, what would be different if, our, if collectively our lives as a church was characterized by that inward presence How would tabernacle be different? How would it be different? The next thing we see is in verse 18 when when Paul says that you may, uh, may be able to comprehend with the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge. And that's an inward perception. We've got an inward power, an inward presence, an inward perception, okay? Don't you just love how Paul compares the vastness of Christ's love in these verses? The love of Christ is so vast that it cannot be properly measured. You know, a couple of weeks ago, 
Uh, I shared with you a Randy Travis song. It said, my love is deeper than the holler. And I said, you know, you could look at that like Christ's love. What happens to a holler over time? It gets deeper, don't it? So if it's deeper than the holler, it keeps getting deeper, right? That's the way God's love is. I love the way David Jeremiah in his commentary on these verses I love what he said. He said, its breadth reminds us that his arms reach around the globe. On the cross, Jesus' hands were stretched out for the whole world. Its length reminds us that his love extends from eternity past to eternity future. It existed before the foundation of this world and will exist after this world ends. Its depth reminds us that his love addresses the deepest needs of the human heart. God loves sinners no matter who they are, what they've done, or where they've been. Its height reaches to the very throne of God. Out of love, Jesus came down from heaven and lifts up to his level anyone who chooses to believe because no one can climb to his. Church, we can't, we can't climb to God's level. The only way we can get to God's level is through Jesus Christ. Church, deep down inside us, we must all have the ability to to know, to see, and to feel the love of Christ. The vast and complete love of Christ. It's only then when we can truly share the love of Christ with our brothers and our sisters. You know, we can't properly tell of, of the love of Christ, its vastness, but we experience, don't we? We experience that love. And it's only then that we can truly share the love of Christ with our brothers and our sisters in our church. It's only then that we can truly share the love of Christ with those in our community so that they can truly experience firsthand who Christ is, the Christ that loved them so much that he died for them. And the last thing that we're going to look at this morning is the inward provision. And that's found in verse 19. It says that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This inward provision is to help us to be more like Christ. What do you think that the provision of the Holy Spirit is. Have you ever thought about that? If you want to flip over in your Bibles, you can flip back to Galatians chapter 5. And it tells us in Galatians 5, verse 22, what the provision of the fruit is, or the Holy Spirit is, and that's the fruit of the Spirit. And that's love. That's joy, that's peace, and patience, and kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. I want you to think for just a minute. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Is that not a perfect picture of Christ? That, that's the perfect picture of who Christ is. You know, once we're saved and the Holy Spirit comes and, and indwells in us, we receive this provision. And it can increase through the inward power, the inward presence, and the inward perception. 
This is done by a uh, continuous filling of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And that's, a, that's different than when the Holy Spirit comes and it dwells in us. Because the Holy Spirit can constantly fill us. Okay? Think of it like a cup. We all go out to eat, and we all, most of us, pro- well, most of y'all probably get sweet tea to drink, right? And you drink your sweet tea, and it's about half full, and the waitress comes over, and what does she do? She fills it back up, right? You know, living the Christian life, our, our cup of love, of joy, of peace, of patience, and kindness, and, and all the fruits of the Spirit can, can get low, can't it? But what does the Holy Spirit do? It fills it back up, right? Now, this is for those obedient believers that will constantly focus on living like Christ daily. You remember a while ago I said that the indwelling, the Holy Spirit's not going to dwell, it's not going to be at peace unless we do what? Three things, repent, confess, and ask for forgiveness. Is that the picture of an obedient Christian? It is, isn't it? So if we're constantly repenting and confessing and asking for forgiveness, is the Holy Spirit going to fill us daily? Absolutely He will. This constant filling will allow for a more, listen to this church, intimate fellowship with Christ. And if we have a more intimate fellowship with Christ, you know what that will allow us to do? That will allow us better to serve Him, to do what He's called me to do, to do what He's called you to do. Church, I've talked with most of y'all about seeing God move in this church and seeing what It's taking place here. And in talking with most of you, y'all can see it too. God's doing something here. He's not doing something so fast that we won't be able to keep up with, but he's doing something here. Seven people in six months, that's pretty doggone good. But listen, church, I want to see this church grow both spiritually as well as numerically. And seeing this church be the centerpiece of everyone's lives as it was so many years ago. If we're going to get there, each one of us, every one of us need to pray this prayer daily for each other. Pray that God will will move ourselves out of the way and that these four things will take place in each one of us. I know that sounds sort of wonky or whatever. Here here it is boiled down. If y'all will pray that prayer for me, I'm going to pray that prayer for each one of you. And as you're praying that prayer for me, My prayer for myself, I'm going to be praying with the same passion that Paul had. And I'm going to be praying that God would remove the barriers in my life that would allow me to increase in that inward power, that inward presence, and that inward perception, and that inward provision. And as I'm praying for you, you need to be praying that God will remove the barriers from your lives so that you can increase in those four inward power, presence, perception, and provision. This morning we're going to have an invitation. And I'm just going to ask that that you just be obedient to what God calls you to do. This would be a good time to come and pray these things for each other.
You can do it in your seats or you can be like Paul and come and get down on bowed knees and pray these. Father, as we get to this time of the service where the inv- we give the invitation, Father, this is your invitation. And Father, we just pray that, um, that your will will be done. Father, we just pray that we're obedient to what you call us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What number? What number? 312 in your hymn books. It won't be on the screen. Father, we're just so grateful that you've allowed us to be in your house. Father, we just pray that you'll just give us a strength and a boldness to go out and share your love, both in word and in deed. Father, all this we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen.